Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast. I am your host, pregnancy-focused chiropractor, Dr. Elliot Berlin. You have tuned into the after episode of a before and after birth story with my guest, who is a writer, producer, and actor, and environmentalist, and now a mom. Congratulations, Bonnie Wright. Welcome back to the podcast. Yes, thank you. A new title I have now, mom. It's good. Yeah, it's going to be hard to fit everything on one card. I know, yeah. <laughs> uh, last time we talked to you, you were very pregnant. You were a little bit uncomfortable and not sleeping. How was the end bit of your pregnancy? Still uncomfortable and not much sleep. Although, actually, I got very good at resting, which I'm not that good at as a person. There were like two times, like I shared in the last episode, that there were like these kind of like false starts of feeling like labor was coming on which they both like really tired me out the experience. So I made a very conscious effort to really rest. So I watched a lot of television and made close friends with my couch. And I feel like it really helped me when it came to birth. I felt like I actually had had some rest. Oh, that's wonderful. Myself is one of my better friends. Very comforting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to recap, the plan ultimately was to labor at home, birth at home. You have these twin sister midwives. Yeah. And who had been pals of yours from before pregnancy. And if I remember correctly, pre pregnancy, Bonnie wasn't even sure she wanted kids at some point. Then it became a yes. And then no birth plan. And then in the pregnancy is when you sort of formulated this vision of giving birth at home with an open mind to whatever is needed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel like I wasn't really informed became more so and I guess maybe just got more in touch with like how and what I saw pregnancy as and for me yeah it was something that I really wanted to fully experience in all its glory and also yeah just be somewhere that I felt very comfortable which really in the end felt like home when I really kind of tuned into trying to imagine the experience as much as we can try to imagine it but yeah always staying open knowing that you just want to be where it's safe as things unfold totally that makes sense to me. How and when did things start? Uh, yeah, so I started getting contractions at like 4 a.m. on the Tuesday. And his due date was the Wednesday, so he came a day early. And all perfectly on time, two hours before midnight in the end. Yeah, started feeling contractions at 4 a.m. And because I'd had those kind of two false start kind of feelings, I kind of felt like, oh, okay, this is familiar, these sort of contraction type feelings. But very, very quickly, they became quite long and quite consistent. And not in a way that I thought. I always just thought that the kind of early labor could sort of like, they could just come and go or the contractions could be quite far apart or not have much rhythm to them and slowly get rhythm over a couple of hours. But sort of by about 5.30 from 4 a.m., I was already texting Tiffany and Taylor, my midwives, and Patty, our doula. So it kind of went quite quickly in terms of their regularity the contractions were already kind of like a minute in length and my husband Andrew was like quickly downloading an app to like count the <laughs> contractions on and the app was already like okay start getting your stuff ready you know head to hospital we're like what it's <laughs> <laughs> based on your pattern meaning how long they are how the frequency and things like that mm -hmm. yeah so the, 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 app... The, the app was like okay you know get ready they need to make one for home birth yeah, exactly. Start, yeah, start you know. calling the midwives. Yeah. <laughs> so I saw that as my time to take a shower and get up and try to have something to eat before I didn't want anything to eat. So yeah, it kind of happened quite quickly. But also it was kind of nice. Like, I guess the contractions themselves were manageable. They weren't like, you know, at that point, sort of difficult to ride. So I was just trying to sort of like the two of us, Andrew and I just kind of ride them together and like get up and try and have a shower and have a snack and time kind of went quickly. And then by the time we spoke to Patty, our doula on the phone, I was already getting to the point where I'd be on the phone and I'd be in a contraction. I'd just be like unable to speak for a minute. She was like, oh, okay, you're like already beginning to sort of Things check out kind of thing. Happening. So it seems like in a short period of time, you realized, even though you had two false starts, quote unquote, that this was different. Yeah, for sure. And was it the length or the intensity that made them feel different or the frequency or a little of everything? I think all of it. I think the intensity as that grew and then just how like rhythmically similar they were and the length of them. 
And then I think it was really when I started to kind of like naturally, you know, bend over or get into positions as they came. That's when I kind of felt as though you kind of begin to get that feeling of, yeah, I guess that kind of checking out or that kind of going to this other sort of place that obviously active labor will kind of bring on more. But I think before when I'd experienced it or the early, I was totally like conscious and able to like chat through the contraction. But this was like speechless already. So for these in that earlier part, like just before, during and after the shower, where did you feel the intensity? I guess it was more in my front. Like I never really felt like intense back kind of pain during the contractions. It was just sort of in my front. And I guess sometimes, yeah, like my pelvis or sometimes kind of my insides of my legs, I guess. Cause I don't know whether that was the strength of my legs kind of holding myself up. I feel like that was the strongest thing throughout labor. I was like, wow, my legs are like doing all the work <laughs> to support me. I feel like they were the most tired in the days afterwards. But yeah, I don't know. It was like hard to explain them, but I feel like they were just these kind of whilst focused in the pelvis, they were kind of those consuming type of like contractions where you just felt like a little overwhelmed in that moment. Yeah. So during those times, were there any particular things that you found comforting? Um, I guess what I didn't find comforting was any type of like communication in those moments. Like, even if I was asked a question, I guess at that point, it was still just Andrew and I, I would just be like, like I can't give you an answer until Talk and then the it would come and go. And then I'd be like, okay, yeah, da, 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 da. but I felt like totally unable to sort of communicate or even like look up like I felt very kind of like down and that kind of continued throughout the labor I was like a lot quieter than I thought throughout the whole thing oh you didn't make a lot of noise is that what you're saying I mean I guess I made noise but there was so much going through my head that was like I was having a conversation with everyone in the room but I wasn't actually able to like say a lot of things oh like, it I didn't like, come out <laughs> no and I feel like the beauty of it, everyone was very connected to like know what I needed. But I felt like there was this internal conversation with me going on with everyone, but I was unable to find the words or energy to say them, which is not something I usually struggle with. Uh -huh. I, like. I like to talk. So Was that shower just a last chance for bathing before the big event or was it meant to soothe? Your I think body. I took it as both really as soon. That was kind of Patsy's suggestion too when we called her at about seven or eight a.m. and she was like, "Okay, well, have a shower, and you know that will soothe you for a bit, and a last chance to have a shower." So that was very soothing, and kind of felt like I wanted to stay in it forever. I was like, oh, "I can just stay in here," mm -hmm. and <laughs> got out, and then I guess Patsy must have come by about just before ten a.m. Okay, so, so this is around five hours or so into it. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll take a quick break, but before we go there, the most important question is, what did you eat? <laughs> I ate a piece of toast with peanut butter. <laughs> that oh, was like you... the last thing I ate till 11 p.m. You glutton. All yeah. right, let's take a little break <laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs> we are back with new mum. Bonnie Wright. Okay, so labor starts. You realize fairly quickly this is different than the false starts. You call your midwives, you call your doula, you hop in the shower and have toast with peanut butter. And five hours into it, Patty comes, your doula. Yeah, so she arrives and I guess she immediately is just checking and seeing where I'm at. But I obviously already was kind of at that point, kind of in my own sort of space but basically we just kind of went through some stuff that we'd like worked on as kind of ideas between my husband and I just kind of like you know leaning on him sort of getting into certain positions that weren't too intense at that point but just sort of small ways to kind of like stretch and sort of sit into them kind of like squats kind of holding his arms kind of being supported by him we had one of those using the piece of fabric that people do the rebozo on, but just hanging it in the door frame so I could just sort oh, of like hang from it. Yeah. And that felt really good, sort of like being just very weighted and down in my pelvis. And so while I was doing that, they were beginning to set everything up because it's like, okay, well, we better get the tub out. We better get all the stuff on the floor to protect the bed and the wood floors and all those things. So they were kind of like doing that while I was still sort of able to just ride the contractions while that was happening. Are the midwives there at this point? So they arrived at, I guess it must have been about 12 they arrived. 
Okay. And in that time from when Patty came until the midwives came, did things continue to pick up pace? It just like picked up. I feel like already from almost at that point, even just like a bit before the midwives came, I felt like, I don't know, in my mind, I had just assumed that there'd be a while where like between the contractions, there would be a tiny sense of relief, but they felt so close together that I felt like literally until the baby was born that there was not a break. You know, it felt pretty like active to me. Who knows what, when that transition kind of happens, but they were, yeah, getting much, much more intense, the contractions or like in to the extent that when my midwives arrived, I was already kind of in my own kind of world Okay. Um, by the time they arrived. In your own world, to the extent that you recall, can you describe feelings like mental, physical, spiritual feelings? Yeah, sure. I guess to me, you know, I was sort of trying to tap into that kind of, whilst you're feeling that pain, kind of attempting to soften too, because I feel like the more you kind of clutched onto that pain, the harder the contractions felt. So I feel like the whole birth itself was just a massive like softening and trying to like kind of go through the pain and not fight against it, which I felt like took a lot of like mental coaching in your own way. I guess spiritually, I feel like the internalness of it all felt very like I was kind of checking out and going to some like other place, which got more intense as the labor went on. And is that a comfortable thing, like getting out of your mind or is it just a thing? I mean, yeah, like definitely the whole thing was the hardest thing I've ever done for sure, both physically, mentally, just to really like go there, I guess, as the contractions got heavier and obviously you're constantly like trying to find new positions and not staying in one position for too long, even if it did feel good, because I felt like you get kind of like stuck there and not sort of progress. But essentially from like that time until about 6 or 7 p.m., like nothing really changed and those contractions stayed pretty intense for those hours and was using all different tools of kind of pain management of positions and different things. And yeah, I don't know. It was just Anytime if I ever felt any doubt in my ability to do it, I felt like I never said it out loud. I think there was one time when I was like, how long is this going <laughs> to, like, what's changing here? Nothing's changing. And that was the only time that I ever voiced any sense of like doubt. And even when I said it, I kind of was like, um, it's, I'm okay. It's fine. And I felt like I didn't want to like put that out into the open because it kind of, then I kind of believed it. So I felt like any sense of doubt I had, I kind of just internally kind of absorbed to kind of have the confidence, I guess, to keep going. What was around you? Did you have particular sounds or scents or lighting? Um, yeah, I guess what was unusual was a lot of it was in the brightness of the day, which I guess in my mind, maybe I just always assumed that like a lot of labor happens through the night, but this was very much like through the brightness of the day, which... I am a day person, but I think maybe that's why I was had my head down most of the time. But yeah, we had different kind of music on. We obviously had the tub that I did go in at two points. But in the end, I didn't actually feel as kind of soothed in there as I thought I would. I felt it very like too watery. I preferred to have a very hard surfaces underneath me and feel more stable. I felt the water quite like I kind of got a bit too lightheaded almost. Mm. Was there a plan to labor in there, deliver in there, or both, or just? I guess a, I, I had no option? idea. Yeah, just to have it there as an option, and I ran very hot throughout the whole labor. Like I was very warm, so just the slight warmth of the tub that wasn't even that warm was like, "Whew, this is too much for me." Yeah. Okay, and then were there things that during these hours where things were kind of intense and not much of a let up in between surges, it sounds like, were there any things that were particularly comforting to you, either touch or things that people said or pressure or sense or anything like that? Yeah, um, a couple of things. I felt like I was gripping on to like a lot of things, whether that was Andrew, whether that was Patty, whether I felt like I was going to crush people's hands that I was holding or any body part, legs, knees that I was kind of clutching onto of theirs. And like I said, I found very comforted by like quite hard and steady positions. Like I was pretty much most of the time sort of squatted on my knees. And he, like we did at one point kind of try on my back or sideline, but that didn't feel good. We also tried at one point kind of laboring on the toilet. That didn't feel good for me. 
I was using those like combs that you sort of like hold on to. And I was honestly surprised that I didn't have like bleeding hands. I was like <laughs> squeezing them so tight. So I like those. We also sort of used yoga blocks, the peanut ball, yoga ball, like just to help kind of support or get into different positions. And like I said, that kind of hanging rebozo thing. And then in terms of talking and coaching of, of that sort of support, I think what I really liked is that naturally as people had to give themselves breaks because it was quite long it was nice when like someone left the room and then like came back in it always felt like that helped mix up the energy a bit or if we moved just a little bit into another position that always seemed to help me because it wasn't really moving or changing the sort of change in people in the room or the position we we're in was the only thing helping me to be like okay this is moving somewhere did you have a thought to at any point go outside or change the yeah. scenery for reels? No, I think because it was the brightness of the day, I felt like I would have been like a bit too stimulated by going outside. Yeah. I felt anything very quiet and like not stimulating was helping the most. Like I said, I was thinking and feeling a lot of things that I wasn't articulating. And it was like interesting, the kind of things and thoughts that go through your head. And there were moments... Not that I ever felt like I needed the assistance of transferring to help move things along when it came to a hospital. I honestly thought the opposite. I was like, I couldn't imagine moving right now. Like I couldn't imagine moving even from one side of the house that we ended up in. I couldn't even imagine like moving to another side of the house. Like I mm. was that sort of set in my little cocoon. Were you throughout this process, did you feel connected to the baby? Like you were doing it together? Or more of a you giving birth to the baby? I feel like the connection really happened when my water actually broke at about 6 or 7 p.m. I think because it suddenly shifted the energy and I was like, oh, okay, something's completely different now happening. But it actually felt like something had just made us closer, literally as that kind of fluid had kind of gone. There was some, I think, closeness of it being closer, the, our, our meeting, and also just suddenly... I was just feeling a lot more, I guess, as he kind of, you know, dropped down. But I guess there was always a partnership in the sense that as I was moving the positions, it was also him and his position that I could feel help in the movements. Like it wasn't me. I was moving, but it was more his movements that I was trying to kind of like understand. Do you feel like there's a degree of that connection that is comforting? Yeah, I think it's scary too, obviously, because you can't see them. And obviously, we were continually, you know, kind of getting the Doppler out and checking his heart rate and everything. And luckily, there was never a moment where it changed. Like, he was very, very stable throughout the whole thing, which made it so comforting to me because I feel like if that had been different, that could have spiked my, you know, anxiety or something. Must have been so, the peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that was always helpful. But there was never any abnormality. In Digging a little bit deeper into the feeling, to the extent that there's consciousness, do you remember feeling excitement, worry, other feelings during the process? Um, yeah, there's that kind of like worry or doubt, or like, am I capable of this? Like, can I go to the place where I need to go to sort of bring my baby here like there's definitely that mental physical threshold that you get to which I don't know if you ever really like cross confidently or you're just constantly feeling that until you kind of get to pushing almost but I think the excitement that it was happening and even though you know those kind of waves of like the adrenaline I guess that was and the hormones that were rushing through my body to sort of like know what to do I think that was also another thing just like my body knew what to do like it always whilst I was suggested positions there felt like this kind of like knowledge of sort of knowing my body and knowing what felt good that I guess helped a lot in that kind of fear yeah I, I didn't think I would tap out as much as I did that kind of like place you go to whether it's a kind of visuals that you have of like it's just getting through that pain was something that I don't know. Now I think like any other pain that comes my way, I'm just going to be like, I've got this. This is fine. I did that. <laughs> you won't even need the combs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a couple more questions before we go into break. So that's on the more sort of mental side. In terms of the physical sensations, was the intensity always just pain? 
were there other physical sensations with that was there pressure was there any sense like has your oxytocin kicked in of any kind of pleasurable feeling or was it all just like intensity in the form of pain i definitely wouldn't say there was any sort of like pleasurable feelings as people have described feeling in during birth i wonder if that's like The whole thing was too long, I think, to ever feel like any sense of that. Yeah, I mean, it was all very kind of focused, like the epicenter of, you know, where the baby was kind of moving through. I didn't ever feel much pain anywhere else in my body. And I didn't get any other. I mean, one symptom I had a lot was I was shaking quite a lot, not just at the end and after birth, but like actually quite a lot through the birth. And yeah, the contractions were there, but the pain, there was a lot of other pain, I guess, sometimes in my body because of the positions I found myself in for a very long time. So I was like grateful for the strength of my body, like elsewhere, in terms of legs or arms or different things that like had the stamina. But yeah, I luckily never had any kind of back pain. And it was all very similar, like the whole time, every contraction kind of was like the same as the last one. Well, I mean, that sort of seems good, but predictable. Yeah, predictable. I mean, there would be the odd one that was a bit more intense, but it was kind of like, I knew at least what was coming each time. But I was for sure, like I said, in that moment, the only time where I was like, um, how is, as long <laughs> is this going to go for? And I think too, because every question you have during pregnancy and birth, you know what, when you're asking it, that there isn't a specific straight answer to it. Like, when's my baby going to come? How long am I going to labor for? Is it going to be, you know, this, this, and this. There's all so much ambiguity in pregnancy and birth. So like, I guess I already knew that. So there were a lot of questions I didn't ask because I knew like no one could give me the answer to them. So I kind of was just like riding on the openness of the unknown. You gave birth at home so you could essentially wear anything you want to. Did you select ahead of time? This is what I want to wear when I'm in labor or when I'm delivering? No, I wasn't that organized. (laughs) I guess also I didn't think I'd be so hot. Like I was so hot that I literally was just in like a kind of like comfortable bra and like at times underwear and then at some point no underwear. So I was just so warm that I didn't even like think about clothes. Were you using like cool washcloths and things to Yeah, we had a lot of cool washcloths. Yeah, like my head, my neck. That was definitely very helpful. And Just, you know, they were, everyone was so good at making sure I kept hydrating and drinking because I wouldn't have drank if I hadn't been so like routinely, okay, have just a little sip or like have a spoonful of honey or something. And then at one point, I think it was suggested like, okay, what about some like broth or soup or something? And I could hear them talking about it as like, that sounds terrible. I I can't. Uh, Did you throw up at any point? And then they like bring it to me and I'm like, absolutely not. I can't drink that. No. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't throw up and I didn't ever feel like uh, nauseous, but just, oh, good. I tried to have a sip of this broth and I was like, no. All right. Last question before we go to break. Did they check your cervix at all? Uh, you know, so no, we didn't do any checking. And that was like an interesting thing for me because at times I was like, do I want to know? Or again, was it this thing where I like didn't want to ask the questions because I didn't want the answer? Like I never asked the time. Like the only reason why I knew the time was because the sun set and I was like, oh, that's what time it is. It's yeah. you know, 7 p.m. So yeah, there are a lot of things that I really thought about internally. Like, do I want service checks? Do I want to know the time? Do I want to ask how long is this going to go on for? Can I do this? And every time I thought about it, I decided not to ask because weirdly the not knowing was what helped me, which is funny because I'm definitely someone who likes to ask questions and know everything. So it was interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot easier to be in the moment without, you know, thinking through all those different details, like what time is it? How far longer are we? And questions that we can't answer, like how much longer is there to go? All right. Well, it sounds like at this point in the story, things are humming along. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll find out the rest. Welcome back. We're knee deep into Bonnie Wright's birth story. Okay, so things are seemingly intense. Your mind is moving from conscious to the unconscious part of your mind. And you're hot. You're (laughs) hydrated, but not having that broth. And things are picking up. 
What happens next? So yeah, the sun starts to go down, which again was my only knowing of time. I was like, okay, well, we've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, because um, it started around 5 a.m., right? So the, and then yeah. sunset at that time would have been around 7-ish? Yeah. yeah, it was around 7. So, so then, 14 hours into it. Yeah, so then my water broke, and it just gave me this rush of energy because it was just this, okay, something's changing, something's happening here, and that felt, like, really good. Was it a gush? Um, it was a, yeah, gush. I'm trying to think if there were any senses before that that's what was happening. I guess I definitely in that moment felt like in a really good, comfortable position that felt like things were kind of moving along, kind of squatted down. I remember I was like squeezing Patty's hand at that point. I was like, I'm going to crush her tiny hand. <laughs> and then, yeah, water broke. And I was just like, oh, okay. And I didn't know why, but in my mind, I was like, okay, when it like, it's like an, an hour, like maybe it's going to be good, like, <laughs> must be close, like we're just going to, because then the feeling of pushing then began to kind of come like oh. very naturally. Quickly? After, after the that, water? Yeah, kind of quite quickly, you know, maybe 20 minutes after that or less than. So then I was like, oh, cool. Like surely you can't push that long, but obviously you can. And that must have been, yeah, about 7 p.m. And then like three hours of pushing continued oh my um, goodness okay yeah uh, what position were you in when your water broke i was like on my knees and my hands were like leaning on like a yoga block so like my head was lower than my hips did the sensations of the surges change after not really no they were still pretty intense and they were okay. still pretty similar oh, the, oh yeah the i mean what happens for a lot of people is they get more intense um well yeah i guess true yeah they would have got more intense yeah and you have pets mm -hmm. what pets do you have we have six we have four six? cats and two dogs <laughs> were they around they were it was pretty funny they'd all like found their place for the day and they just were there sleeping the only animal that came up to me was one of our dogs who's like she's younger she's only one and every so often she would come and check in on me and kind of like you know, give me a kiss and like check I was okay. And then she would sort of leave me. And then my older dog, Billy, he only came right at the end. Like, I think he felt some sort of like something's happening here. Like, is huh. she okay? Kind of thing. But most of the time they were all very close. Well, the dogs more so. The cats are very independent. They're off on their own, but the, the dogs were like cats. close, but they weren't sort of like in my face too much. What breeds? They're both dogs i've never really found out their breeds they're both adopted but they're kind of mixes between huskies and australian cattle dogs oh wow do they bark with an accent okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay so that's the pets that sounds like the little almost puppy dog was the one who was most doula like yeah she was yeah she was trying ruby was uh coming in thinking that i needed some love and touch which is true now, you expected pushing would go on for not that long. When you felt the urge to start pushing, do you just naturally start pushing or was it wait for any kind of guidance? No, I didn't really feel any guidance. It was just like this kind of pushing sensation that like, I can only describe as like the sensation you know when you sit on the toilet to push to go to the toilet. It's as like instinctual and normal as that. And... I think I wasn't really coached. I guess the only thing I was coached in the pushing towards the end was sometimes to give some of the pushes a bit of a break and not go so hard to not kind of give too much stress to the baby that was obviously getting closer, which was helpful to do, I think, because it was also exhausting. I found that like the most tiring thing. So it was good sometimes to kind of pull back on some of the pushes because it went on for so long. Where are you for pushing? So we kind of moved again multiple times. We at one point even tried like kind of being on my back on the bed because we felt like maybe we were thinking like he was a bit tucked up on my pelvis or something. This was like kind of towards the end. And then that was the only time actually the midwives sort of like check me and check him to see if he was maybe, but he wasn't. He was totally fine and clear of any thing and my back and the bed did not feel good. So once we tried that for one contraction, I was like, let's move again. So yeah, the whole time we were basically going between like my bedroom and like the hallway to the bathroom was like the only places we ended up in in our house. And so yeah, moving around again, a lot of squats kind of being in very sturdy positions. 
you know, held up by things. I remember I right at the end in the final, I guess, hour position was like holding onto the side of the birthing pool, like the handle to it. And I was like, I'm going to break this pool and the water's going to like go everywhere. I was like, well, I guess not. This oh. thing must have been designed to be wrapped <laughs> onto <laughs> really tight. Yes, labored. So I used uh, more of the outside of the pool than the inside of it. Did you have a thought during all that pushing ever to get in there? No, I didn't really. Again, I too uncomfortable. I, yeah, I felt like the slight inflation of the ground of the pool, like too wobbly. Like I felt too unsupported. Yeah. So in the end, like the final position I was in, I was actually like sat on two yoga blocks, like either side of my like hips, basically. Oh, okay. I wonder what did pushing feel like to you? Um like a relief because it was better than kind of the surge or the contraction but also like sometimes towards the end because I think you so wanted one of those pushes to make that big progression you want I could feel a little nervous in them because I was like is this going to be the one that brings baby through and then it wouldn't be so it'd be like oh my gosh okay so it'd be this kind of you know four steps forward three steps back sometimes so anytime that pushing sensation and that round of pushing didn't kind of bring on any change it was like, okay, well, got to do this all uh, all again kind of thing. It was a lot of stamina, I think. And I think the sort of surge and contraction in those pushing moments were the ones where I had to like go so deep into my mind of like softening through the pain. And I found too, if I started pushing too soon, it was like really painful. So like letting the surge and the contraction happen before switching to the pushing and if I did that too soon, it was like, that wasn't good. Like it hurt. Yeah. It seems really contradictory in your mind, like to surrender yeah, and let quite... go and then push and then with push. force yeah. and vigor. But that makes sense. Like if you push before the contraction really kicks in. Yeah. Then, then you're like, uh, yeah, it's like uh, you're just pushing two forces. Like it's too much. But I feel like that was in those moments too. I feel like the most connected I felt to my son, just in the sense that like, to soften like that and to go into that like dark space to get through the pain was kind of like worth it because I felt connected to him and I was doing it for him and he was so close at that point. So yeah, I feel like in those last few hours was definitely the most connective kind of relationship that you're beginning to have. Was there any point where you either reached down and felt his head or looked with a mirror to see him? So yeah, that was like offered and they were like, do you want to get a mirror and we can get a mirror and you can see. And I was like, oh, uh, I was like, no, like I, I, don't, I was like, cause I was t again worried that I would get the mirror and I'd be like, he's not even, what are you talking about? Like, I can't see anything. <laughs> um, and I would feel like he's not close. And then I didn't feel until like, they must've been already asking, like you could, you know, put your hand down and feel. And, and again, I was like, oh, I'm worried. I'll put my hand down and feel nothing. And then I'll be like, oh my God, this is gonna be hours more but then i did finally and i'd like oh whoa, okay yeah that's his head and did that give you a an even deeper connection or more of a surge of energy i think it gave me a surge of energy because it's just like whoa that's wild kind of just like okay you know it's on type of thing i felt like the connection was already there like i don't think that really helped more to connect i think it was just like this is wild like the whole thing is just absolutely wild as an experience birth so yeah. I think that was my main takeaway in the days afterwards, just that kind of days you're in of like, whoa, what was that? You pushed for about three hours. Was there a moment where you had that breakthrough that you were looking for? Uh, Yeah, I guess I didn't feel like it was, you know, each contraction or pushing might not be the one, you know, and then it finally is the one and sort of like head pops out and then you're like, okay. And that was just like the biggest relief. And I think rush of adrenaline, even before he was fully kind of out. And I think too, I remember my midwives kept being like, just visualize him just like, you know, coming, falling through your legs, like just coming right. I was like, I am, I am like, they were all helpful, <laughs> but I was like, trust me, I am visualizing his coming through and I'm still here. So when he finally did, it's just like the most bizarre feeling, like suddenly there's a baby. Yeah. Two things. Did you have what people call the ring of fire? Um. I don't know, honestly. I can't remember. I don't think I did specifically have like a specific kind of, it kind of just felt just pressure, more pressure, but it didn't feel like particularly 
different to the pressure I'd felt. And did his head come out and his body right after during the same push or? No, it was his head and then like another push was the body. Oh, who caught him? I think my midwives did because I was like holding so tightly on everything else. I don't even think I could have helped put my hands without falling down. <laughs> So, yeah, my midwives, Tiffany and Taylor, would have caught him. And then it was like straight up into my arms. Hmm. And then it was just like, yeah, unexplainable high. Oh, yeah. Like, tell me about that. Well, I think also there's just so much fluids and everything. And that he had a lot, like quite a lot of vernix still on his skin. And you know, and it, you're just looking. And he had a full head of like dark hair. And it was just like, you kind of think like, and also because we hadn't found out the sex, you know, we decided through pregnancy to not find out if it was a boy or a girl. And we like, there was a couple of minutes went by and we were like, oh, wait, what is, is it a boy? <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it was just this kind of like, I think just immediately see me just want to like, there was just this immediate like urge, to just like hold him so close and just, you know, have him on your skin. And we sort of sat there for a second and then we kind of moved to the bed. And at that point, oh, I guess we moved to the bed at that point. I hadn't birthed my placenta at that point yet. And then I, I mean, he took a minute, I guess, to have that first sort of cry and breather there, but it, it didn't take too long. But there was the minute, obviously, where it was kind of waiting for that to happen before we moved to the bed. But yeah, I don't know. I think I was just like stunned and felt like I'd just come off a, the wildest trip. And yeah. <laughs> was birthing in placenta? And... I really, I felt like I was like, I still feel so bizarre. I think that I felt really like I want this out kind of thing. And I remember at one point, one of my midwives was like okay well I'll, i could sort of see if i can help guide it out and she's like okay no i it's still let's just wait a second and then i would just get those kind of feelings like oh it feels like i'm having a bit of a contraction here maybe this will kind of help it and then it kind of easily sort of came out and the minute that happened i felt a big kind of full relief of everything and yeah i feel like the most special thing obviously was holding it myself but also just having when andrew held him for the first time like that just felt really special and he like immediately stopped crying and just obviously heard his voice that he recognized because he would have heard it for so long um, during pregnancy. So that was really special. So sweet. How was your recovery physically? Uh, yeah, I feel like the few days afterwards, you're in sort of emotional days and sort of like sort of recounting the birth and just like, wow, I have this human being here. And there's a lot of kind of like, I think also your center, I felt like my center as it's still just suddenly empty you know, you're almost sort of like, you don't have a center anymore. I mean, your center is your son and he's moving around a little bit more. But I found that like very, like, I would be a little bit off balance or just a bit sort of like airy and in my kind of like thoughts. But I guess really last minute, like a couple of days before he was born, we decided to get, you know, more sort of postpartum doula support, which was a great sort of last minute decision. And that was really good. Yeah, I felt like no need to go anywhere or have anyone immediately come over like we very much just wanted to be in our own sort of bubble yeah I think it's challenging too because you're wanting to heal and you want to sit down and not be on your feet too much because that would obviously make things harder but you've also got like a newborn baby that needs your attention all the time so it's this push-pull of you know being a mother and a caregiver and then also trying to like give that care to yourself too it's definitely challenging and I felt like you know, immediately supported the two of us just had it sort of down together and felt very much in our little team. And yeah, it still feels like I'm only just emerging from that now, which is like three how, weeks. How old is he now? So he's three weeks and two days. Oh, wow. And I guess a couple of final questions. So feeding, has feeding gone well? So he had like a pretty extreme tongue tie that our midwives saw in like the first hour of his birth like it was that intense oh, uh, wow. like that prominent so I kind of was like oh okay like definitely heard a lot about tongue ties and lip ties and different experiences from people so yeah the latch for breastfeeding was like because of that tongue tie and then later we realized a bit of a lip tie the latch was like very tight and he really couldn't open his mouth that wide so like he, when he was three days old we were already like going to the dentist to have that basically like looked at so he ended up having like his lip tie released on that day three of his life and then like five days later his tongue tie released so it was quite like a lot to deal with like I didn't think I would be leaving the house three days into postpartum time yeah especially for a procedure exactly so that was like quite an emotional thing to go through even though it felt 
right to do and we like loved the person and dentist we like found and we also had like a lactation consultant come over to the house like before we decided to go do that and she very much like agreed with that and just sort of explained how that would help and that really really helped I think just give me some confidence just generally having a lactation consultant kind of that we'd already had a phone call with before the birth and sort of like plan to have her come no matter what even if there was you know no struggle um just to kind of feel a bit more confident in this whole new thing you're doing as a full-time job and yeah so it's been challenging even since those procedures it's, it took him like a good week or more to sort of heal from them and really get to a good place with that so yeah I, I mean breastfeeding is a wild thing as much as I knew I really wanted to do that you realize how different it can be for everyone and it's not something that immediately just happens and it's such a thing that you're practicing essentially as they are too there's a learning curve yeah i feel like there's just the ups and downs of it like you could have a couple feeds and you're like that was great and then you have a couple that are not great and you're like oh my god i can't do this this is so hard and it is really hard and i think it was definitely really helpful to have the support during that time between the lactation consultant, the dentist, the postpartum doula, our midwives, like to know we had people to text and check in with definitely helped to kind of feel supported and confident because I do feel like, yeah, that postpartum time, you don't want like the only support to be Googling. <laughs> to be Google. Uh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so many people say that they were a hundred percent sure they were going to quit, you know, twice before it felt like, okay, oh, I got this. Looking at the whole story in retrospect, a few final questions. One, is there anything in your planning that you did for birth that you felt was particularly helpful? Uh, yeah, everything, really. I think what was also helpful was, like, I remember, like, a month before my due date, like, this feeling of just, like, putting all the books and all the things away. Like, I think I'd been curious, obviously, during the nine months to become more informed. But then there felt, like, a really urge to sort of, like, put all of the sort of thinking stuff away and just kind of connect with my confidence that like I'm going to know what to do so I felt that helpful just to like put the rational the stories away and I guess yeah all the like the yoga and the stretching and the different sort of like things I did really helped me when I came to birth like I very much like used a lot of those positions that I had been using during pregnancy and I was very like in the days before, maybe like the two weeks before I gave birth, every day I was, you know, giving a good like hour to stretching and kind of doing all those positions that I felt oh, were really, really so helpful. Awesome. And I feel like genuinely probably helped create more space for him to kind of come down. Yeah, the stretching, the kind of like putting the books away was kind of the main things and just really connecting to, yeah, my confidence and ability to know what to do and to have just an open dialogue with Andrew of like what it's going to be like and how we're kind of going to be there for each other. Was there anything that took you by surprise that you didn't expect? Um, well, I guess I didn't expect to push for three hours. That's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, okay. I guess I thought early labor would be longer. Like it felt like it went from sort of like early labor for like two hours to full in like it definitely happened much faster than I expected but obviously everyone is different so that was quite a kind of call on my stamina I think but I got was through it there anything in particular that your husband Andrew anything that he did or or said that you found most helpful I mean as I said like people would come and go in the room to kind of mix things up but I guess he pretty much was the person who was there most of the time and didn't really like leave my side too much but I felt like he could tell that I wasn't in a like talkative mood so I think like anything he gave to me was just physical kind of presence and being strong rather than kind of coaching me too much like I feel like he probably like allowed the midwives Taylor and Tiffany and Patty to more kind of coach through the talking as they had that kind of experience but it felt like he was just this like steady unwavering kind of person that was there I know that he probably was struggling to sort of see me in pain or to sort of not have any fears and he very much like kept those inside so I think that was the best thing like he didn't project any of his fears or worries onto me and just kept very steady and strong Here's the big question. Yeah. If you decide to have another and do it again, 
Is there anything that you would do differently? I do remember during pregnancy being like, how can anyone do this twice? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep, our biology is like taught to forget this probably. Uh, would I do anything differently? No, not really. I mean, I would just hope that it wasn't an 18 hour labor, however long it was. I guess I would just kind of like pray that it would just move a bit faster, but I wouldn't make any different choices with who I had there, where we had it. And maybe yeah. overnight. Yeah, maybe of... overnight. <laughs> During the, the bright blaring, sunlight. sunny, sunny days. Yeah. But maybe that was reflective of my personality of loving the daytime. Who knows? Yeah. It... <laughs> Totally could be. I do think that uh, one of the reasons people tend to go into labor at nighttime is because it's their calm time, you know, yeah. when, when the nervous system feels calm, it's go time. And I guess at they, least there wasn't another sunrise. I feel like that would have been hard. Oh, that's depressing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Bonnie, thank you so much for coming in, for sharing your story, your pregnancy, your plans for birth and how your birth and postpartum went sounds like you had a lovely experience and you worked hard for it. You prepared in a lot of different ways and you took care of your body and your body took care of you. I'm really happy for you. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like I obviously, like I shared in the previous one, I've listened to so many of these kind of before and afters that you've done. And I would listen to the before and listen to the after and be like, I will be in the after at some point, you know, and that kind of time feels like it's going to be forever away, but during that long pregnancy. Yeah, it gave me a lot of hope to know that like I'll have my story to tell. And yeah, I feel like the biggest takeaway was just realizing like at the end, my body knew what to do. Like nature did its thing. Beautiful. Where can we find you online? Yeah, I have a website for my book and the stuff I do with that. That's gogently.earth. And then that's the same name as my Instagram for that. And then my personal one is this is be right on Instagram. I hope that you do some kind of book or production or something about <laughs> pregnancy, birth, and parenting. I'll yeah, the, I feel uh, like it'd be interesting. There's so many things to navigate as a parent, the choices that you make in terms of how it like connects to my interests when it comes to you know environmental stuff and sustainability. Uh, yeah. Lots of things to navigate. Suddenly you have this new life and there's like 101 things that you need or you don't need. So yeah, it's definitely something that I'm interested to explore and share. I'll be the first to read it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Bonnie. And at home, thanks for listening to Informed Pregnancy. And for more pregnancy and parenting resources, visit us online at informedpregnancy.com. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a 